I go crazy cause she looks like a plug But she thinks like a bee FM, Sancho Loco Show I got a very special, uh, very special guest on the line right now And um, we're going to be putting him on uh, Good morning, William Hung Oh, hey, Mark, how's it going? Pretty good, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great, guy. Very busy day ahead of me, but like, it's a great day. I appreciate you calling back. Last time, uh, you know, we did an interview. Um, some of our listeners didn't get a chance to hear some of the great information that you were providing, so you were uh, more than willing to do it again. So I, I want to just first start off by thanking you for uh, calling in again. I know you're a busy man. I know you got a lot going on, but you know, um, thank you. No problem. So um, William Hung uh, was born in Hong Kong. And he moved to the um, United States. And uh, you first went off to school in New York, right? Uh, no. What, what happened was that I went to school in Berkeley. Okay. It's, it's, uh, I came to school in the United States, basically, yeah. And then Los Angeles. And then, I, and then I went through middle school and high school. And then I went to Berkeley. And then, like, recently, a lot, ha- a lot of stuff happened, obviously. But, uh, and then recently, I graduated from a college in New York. Called Marist College. Okay, and uh, you went to college in New York, right? And then uh, from New York, um, did you move to Los Angeles from that? That because it says you went to school uh, New, or you lived in New Jersey, and then you moved to Los Angeles, right? Okay, this uh, Wikipedia stuff is all wrong. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you uh, are, are you telling me the the people that report <laughs> government facts? <laughs> Wow, man. Uh, I don't know. I, it's, it's not quite right. It is right, but they, they are only partially right. Okay. I I mean, that, yeah, because they're partially right because I, I, uh, I, only grad, I graduated uh, with an online program, so I never went to New York for college. Yes, I did go to a university in New York called Marist College, but, it's online, uh, uh, but their program is 100%, 100% online. So I was in Los Angeles throughout. Oh, okay. So you you pretty much came to Los Angeles first. That's great. Um, yes. And then you studied uh, civil engineering. Was that your did, was that one of your first careers, civil engineering, or or did you did you go? Um, were you always uh, interested in the LAPD, or was that like a, a later thing? Uh, it was a later thing because because when I studied for the civil engineering, I just thought it was I thought it was good in math and science. Mm-hmm. And I could get through it just fine, but then, then I didn't do so well in school. I got my first C in my life. Oh, really? Now, now, uh, now, I, yeah. that must that must have been a really big thing because I know, like, in Hispanic families, we're not so hard on on our kids. Like, I mean, we should be, but we're, you know, I, I think in Asian families, they're they're really hard on their kids with education, and, they, and so getting your D. What what did your parents think when you got your first D? Uh, I didn't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> did you hide your report card, or how did you do that? Uh, no, because in Berkeley, it's like it, I I'm the only one that's getting the the the, the letter of notification. Yeah. Like I was I was placed in probation, uh, but nobody else needs to know about it except me. Yeah, I I actually visited Berkeley one time uh, with my my brother went to Berkeley uh, and um, and I visited the campus. It's a really nice campus, but um, you know, you could easily get distracted by the busy life right there. There's a, you know, that's there's a, that's a busy life around there. So, you know, I I seen kids going to you know school, but then I seen them. You know, I was at I stayed in the dorm for one night, and then I seen a bunch of kids partying too. So it's like, you know, it's it, you got to stay focused. Um, so you went to Berkeley, and then uh, what made you want to try out for American Idol? Like what? I I mean, like were you already singing? Did you were you singing prior to that? I was singing for fun prior to that. And then uh, you tried out for American Idol. And then uh, a good inform- a, a good piece of information that I wanted to talk about uh, is I asked you if you knew Simon and, and Paula and them. And it seemed like uh, on, on TV you had a great relationship with them. But then you were telling me that you didn't even really know them. And uh, so could you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, of course. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know them. I still don't know them very well. I only saw them like four to five times throughout 13 years. So I, I, I just auditioned uh, like everybody else. Uh, it didn't work out. I think you people have heard heard what happened. Mm-hmm. Basically, I, I tried to entertain them, and then Simon stopped me in the middle of my chorus. He said, "Thank you, thank you." 
you can't sing, you can't dance. So what are I going to say? Right. I, I and, said I already gave my best. I have no regret at all. So yeah. And that's, that's and and that's one of your things. You're 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 a motivational speaker now, and I'm going to touch on that in a little bit. But I kind of want to build up to that. So so they they kind of um I guess they didn't let you through the, the the round right and so do you feel that they were sincere because i read something and, and, and i don't know correct me if i'm wrong do you feel like they, they were sincere with their comments or did you feel like they like the they made a mockery of you uh i feel they were some sincere in the comments but i, I i'm not i mean but i'm not sure what's behind it because in my impression is that those three people, Simon, Randy, and Paula, they seem they seem to play a certain role. Like Paula, people always know she's the nice lady. Uh, Randy is kind of in the middle. Simon is always seems to be the mean guy. So is it kind of like a good cop, bad cop kind of deal where somebody says something nice and then somebody kind of you know says something negative and they just do it for ratings? You believe? It's hard to say. I can't tell. Right. But I, I, I think that something, something, uh, something tells me that it's not quite who they are. It's something tells me that they, they, they have to do it because they have to play a certain role. Right. And and you've had a lot of like, like you've recorded albums and you've been you know I, I read that you did a movie uh, back in your country and so you've been kind of around the entertainment scene. Do you believe? Any, I mean, because it's hard for me to believe that anybody in Hollywood is sincere. Do you believe that Hollywood is sincere, or do you think that it's just, you know, every everything is based off of popularity and ratings? Uh, I don't like to generalize on this because I, because I believe that situ there are situations where we all have to present the best version of ourselves. Right. Uh, not because we don't want to be genuine, but well, it's more like because we have to be careful with what we say and how we say it and how we present it. Right. And so you go from um, American Idol and all these experiences, over 4 million followers. You had, you had a lot of people that liked you. I and mean, you still do. Um, and then you, you made a, a lot of different albums. And where do you go from here? So, so you go from the entertainment business. And did you reach a pinnacle in your life where you're just like, you know what? I I've had it. And I need to get back to a normal lifestyle, and I'm going to work for the LAPD. No, no okay. So let me make, 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 make a correction for listeners here. I'm not. I did not work for LAPD. I'm working for. I worked for the LA Sheriff's Department. Oh, okay. So with that being said, the I think the decision point came about four years uh, after traveling, performing full time, mm -hmm. uh, because at that point, I think things started to slow down. And I can't re really rely on that in, on my entertainment alone to sustain myself. And that's why I, I just go back to school and get go back and get a day job. It's okay. It's nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. Right, because because you already had an education, so you said, you know what, let me let me go back and revisit that and build on that, and then you know start start my career. So so you've you've you went to work for the sheriffs, and how did you transition from that? into motivational speaking because are you doing those simultaneously or or do you do you kind of uh do the motivational thing full time now uh, i'm trying to get to the point i'm doing full time so the way it happened was that i i've been sitting i haven't really thought about motivational speaking until this year okay. before that but i was just i was just okay i feel okay to just do my day job have fun outside of work I mean, I I mean, I was in Toastmasters for over five years, mm -hmm. but but I still haven't thought about motivational speaking until this year. And the way and the way it came about is that I just feel that my life there's something missing. I, I like I feel that I'm more capable than just another regular average person sitting be, sitting behind my cubicle doing my work. I feel that I'm I can be much more than that. And that's what that's what it came to me that. Maybe I should share that story, that American Idol story, to help people, to inspire people. Right, and and you know, in all honesty, I, I told you this last time that that's one of the reasons why I look up to you because you know there's there's a pessimist and there's optimist, and I believe that you are positive, positive through and through, and I think that you know that's the only way you need to be in life because 
it makes no sense to to um, put all these obstacles in front of you. And I believe that uh, your message and your story is a great story to help people build on their lives because a lot of times, you know, we we learn from experience. And so you've had all these uh, trials and tribulations, and um, I I believe that you can share that through speaking and help people out. So that's that's a wonderful thing you're doing. Um, where is the where is the list or where can the listeners find your information? Because I know that you have a website and you, you have social media. Yes. I would say you could call my social media, like, like William Hung on Facebook. That's, that's where I'm most active. Uh, and then my website, WilliamHung.net. I also update regularly. Nice. And, um, a couple more questions for you. And I know you got to get going. So, so I'll be quick about this. Um, do you ever find, do you ever find it? Uh, I, I don't want to say. Does it ever get in your way when fans recognize you? Because I know you're a very recognizable person. When you're at work for the sheriffs, or when you're doing motivational speakers, and and you see you have tons of fans out there, does that ever get in the way of your work? Sometimes it does, uh, because so, sometimes it, it sometimes it's a bit awkward to have people recognize me uh, in in like a in like a work related event, like a like when we hang out for lunch or things like that. Right. But that's but that's that's part I, but that's that's part of that's part of my identity. That's who that's who I am. That's who you know. I don't have I don't I don't like. Let's just put it this way. I embrace it. You know, because it, without that, I don't get to where I am today. So I I embrace it. But right. Sometimes I feel I do feel a little bit annoyed. I I be honest here. Right. Because. Whether I'm having lunch or I get somewhere, you know, I, I could get annoyed. But if I, I, but I try to stay very cool. I try to look. I try to be very good to people because at the end of the day, you never know who you might end up working with now. Right, and and you never know. It's just like it's just like when I saw you at the uh, business mixer. I was totally not there for that, um, but I recognized you right when you walked in the door, and and you know. Um, one of my coworkers was like, who is that? And I said, that's William Hung. And then, you know, I said, just take the picture. And then, and then we took a picture and then I, but, but the, the long story short is, is you were at a, a business mixer and you know, you were probably trying to network there, but um, I'm, I'm imagining that when you're working for the sheriffs, people are recognizing you left and right. Um, so, you know, can you do me a favor? You did this last time and uh, I want to end it with this. Can you do me a favor and sing a few bars of She Bangs. Sure. All right, we're ready. We're ready. Bang. Okay, there we go. All right. She bangs, she bangs. Oh, baby, when she moves, she moves. I go crazy because she looks like it's love, but she seems like it's be Like every girl in history. She bangs, she bangs. I'm waiting to find a way she moves, she moves. No one's ever loved so far. She reminds me that a woman's got one thing on her mind. Hey, William, if I was Simon, I would have let you through, man. I'm just letting you know that right now. I appreciate you. Thank you for calling in again and uh, giving us this great interview. Um, anything, any last words you want to say to the listeners, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, where they can find you or, or uh, any last messages? Well, just, uh, the one thing that would be that would help you succeed is it's not necessarily talent, it's not necessarily other factors. It's how hungry are you for success. The more hungry you are, the more you're willing to do the other things that that's required. So don't give up on your dreams. Keep trying until you get there. You heard it here, Sancho Loco Show. Thank you, William Hung. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. She bangs, she bangs, oh baby, when she moves, 